Welcome to whatever episode this is. As you can see, I finally have the Misumi extrusions, and yeah, at this point there really isn't anything from anything stopping me from doing most of the build. I'm still waiting for my rails from Robotic. It's probably delayed because of the whole coronavirus thing. I don't know. For the Voron build, for the mid plate, mid plate or the deck panel as they call it, and the bottom plate. I was planning on using uh, aluminium sheets as you might remember and I did spray paint those but yeah if you also remember if you watched the episode they ended up being pretty scratched and yeah honestly I don't want to deal with spray painting them again and so I decided to source different materials in my country it's very hard to source something like ABS or Coroplast that's why I didn't go with those initially I can get my hands on acrylic but that's very hard to cut so in the end I decided to go with uh, high density polyethylene and yeah this stuff seems to be easy to cut at least based on what I read and it should work for the build but unfortunately this is just straight out of the packaging I just received it it is pretty scratched so yeah it's not perfect but it still looks better than the aluminium sheets look so I guess I'm still gonna go with these. As you can see I now assembled the frame and I also took the opportunity to mount the Z motors and the feet and well obviously this is upside down at the moment but yeah this is all done by the looks of it since I don't still have the rails the next step would be to mount the my HTP sheets and yeah I'm just recording this to show you that I did in fact cut these plates as you can see so yeah I guess it's time to mount these this is the current situation on the main frame I guess but not a main frame whatever uh, I mounted the HTP sheet as you can see and then I also mounted the bed rails now only thing waiting on here is mounting the bed and then well there won't be much I can do on the main body until I get the rails but I can work on the electronics so that's probably what I'm gonna work on next I've done a decent amount at this point for today and well don't worry I'm only talking about the real day the video will continue and as you can see I started mounting the electronics here we have four of the TMC 2209s with three here. Also, you have I had to modify the jumpers for these boards, and I did it according to the uh, where is it? Whatever uh, the community SKR guide thing. Uh, I also mounted the Raspberry Pi. As I showed before, I'm using this heatsink, but well, the mount isn't designed for it. Yeah, I mean, obviously they wouldn't expect you to have the heatsink, so yeah, I had to do something. As you know, I don't have a working 3D printer at the moment, so this is the best thing that I could come up with, at least for now in the middle of the night. Maybe my head will work better tomorrow, because I'm really tired at this point. But yeah, that's about it. I did some of the wiring, as you can see. With all this mess, I routed the power here properly, and this is actually just a thick regular AC cable because I didn't have the proper color code, and that's what I wanted to use just in case. So, yeah, it runs here, then to this power supply, which is the 12 volt, this was what the 24 volt one, and then to 5 volts. From the 5 volt one I'll connect the bed and the SSR and I'll run the uh, earth connection to the metal chassis just in case. I also started doing some cable sleeving and running the cables for the motors here but uh, there is a problem. Uh, this is the crimpers that I'm using. This is actually just for regular Molex Minifit Juniors or basically the PC ATX cables are the same 
and I used this for cable slaving on my computer before and this is all I have and I thought this would work because well on paper specs seemed okay but the problem is well the you see the two dies and well the they are too wide and that means means on the pin itself I should probably put the macro lens on sorry for the noise change that's about to happen but otherwise you won't really be able to see you see the, the outermost whatever you call these p-shaped things that fold in that's for the cables outer sleeve and the ones inside are for the conductor itself and that's all fine but because this is a two die crimper the problem is the spring is here and there is not enough gap between the second uh, crimp and the spring which means the second die actually crushes the spring in there so this is incompatible. I tried doing using this. I guess I can do this now. I tried using it uh, with just by crimping onto the sleeve and maybe it would connect and then I also tried just crimping on the conductor itself. The conduct just crimping on the conductor was very weak. It didn't do anything at all. And the ones that I crimped on the sleeve they are strong as you'd expect but yeah it's not holding on to the conductor properly obviously so I don't know I think this isn't really uh, suitable because I know the power that these motors draw it has a potential of making an arc and yeah I don't think this is safe so I'll need to come up with something else for the connectors. I still want to use the JSTXHs because that's what these boards natively support. But yeah, I need to come up with a way of crimping those. I'm not gonna order crimpers online because, well, it would be international shipping. I wouldn't be able to find those in my country. And international shipping would delay this for weeks. So and if I order from Amazon, that's quicker, but even then, it's more than a week. So, yeah, I don't want to go that route. At the same time, I really don't know what I can do. So, yeah, what I just said may change by the end of the episode. Another thing that I should show is, well, as as you remember earlier in this episode, I showed that I connected this with a string. And I really don't know what I was thinking, I was very tired yesterday, but yeah, obviously it wasn't a great idea, so I replaced it with zip ties. It's stronger now, but obviously it still moves around, but this is temporary anyway. I looked, in the, looked at the mods for the Voron, and there is a mount for the seat sink, so I'll switch to that as soon as I can, but obviously I do need a working 3d printer for that so this is the temporary solution I mounted this extrusion to the motor mounts on the gantry but it looks like that's all gon I'm gonna be able to do on the gantry again because I don't have rails the clone MGN9 rails from Robotic have arrived and as you can see I didn't go with the stock black ones in the bomb I went these with these apparently these are higher end and well they, their pricing is more expensive to reflect that but somehow the shipping was significantly cheaper so this ended up being cheaper even if even if shipping costs were the same I would have gone with this though because uh, some people on discord say that this is higher quality and if you were around back in the Black Widow days you know that I had some problems with clone in that case MGN12 rails but yeah 
these do seem decent quality but I'll add that they don't slide the exactly same for example you know I'm applying roughly the same force as you can see once I remove my finger this doesn't slide and this slides freely which means the, uh, the lubrication isn't the same but other than that they seem to be fine and well, none of them get stuck on random parts of the rail or anything like that but yeah again it's not the same quality that you would expect from a genuine high wind that's for sure but again I think these are good enough for the project as you can see I have eight of these and that's because I thought at the time of ordering that I could add a second rail for the I think it's the x-axis that only had one well turns out he, with the afterburner they decided to do it decided to do it after all but yeah at the time of ordering I was just thinking about modding the uh, war on to add that so yeah that's why I went with eight and as I said before I'll go with the afterburner and yeah that's about it I'll try some lubrication with some lithium grease I guess maybe I can improve these but yeah th there are some horror stories about that out there as well so I'll not apply too much the proper grease to use is uh, LMGI if I remember correctly one great grease which is a type of lithium grease but it's a very specific type uh, Mobilux EP1 is for example one of those but I don't have access to small canisters of those I, the, the ones that they sell are 20 kilos or something like that and there is a clone version of it for half price from a local petrol station and again that one is also 16 kilos so yeah I'm not sure if I'm gonna buy that or not but yeah as I said the proper lubrication method would be to use those and apply them it would also be a good idea to clean every single carriage and the balls uh, if I had a ultrasonic cleaner I would probably dunk these in there to do that and then le uh, sorry re-lubricate them it's a hard word to say <laughs> so yeah I would do that but I don't have it so yeah that's the situation with these so I guess let's get to mounting these I've made a decent amount of progress for today as I said as, as before I'll continue tomorrow so it's not the end of the video yet I think but yeah as you can see I now assembled the gantry completely and mounted the rails and yeah you can see that it works there's still a decent amount too but the next step for me is to run the belts like this in a loop going through these holes which by the way don't find that they're roughly cut there will be cosmetic parts that I will print later on that will cover those so it's not a big problem like this mistake won't be visible for example but yeah that's how much progress I made it takes less than a minute to explain but trust me I've been at this for many hours now so yeah I think I deserve some rest and tomorrow is also the weekend Sunday so I should be able to continue and um, yeah we'll see how much progress I can make for this episode Maybe I'll have another day or two to work on this, but that's not for sure since it's, it's the weekdays. So yeah, I'll come back to you once I've made a bit more progress. Fuck. I routed all the belts and then tightened them on both the Z axis and the gantry for an, uh, the X and Y axis or AMB motors, whichever you prefer. I also completely assembled the hot end carriage. I just need to mount the zip, zip chain and probably sleeve this sponge as well. And yeah, there is a decent amount of cables here as you can see. I'm planning on using just a regular uh, 24 pin motherboard connector. You know, the ones you use on computers. 
five hours have passed since the last video and all i did is these two fucking zip chains these are yeah i'm not i'm not gonna say but should go with it but yeah they are a big pain to assemble they're annoying and yeah i don't like them basically and it doesn't feel like it will last either so i'll probably change them and just assembling these two basically wasted my entire sunday which means well it's the weekdays now i won't have as much time to work on this i'm not sure if this is the end of the video or not but yeah it may be next week there is a video that i already edited it's just a quick review video but the week after that the next forum episode should go live and by then I expect my uh, new crimpers to have arrived from America as well so yeah I should be able to finish this uh, printer in the next episode and yeah just in case this is the end of the video otherwise I'll cut this but yeah I hope you enjoyed the video if you did please leave me a like down below and thanks for watching